Hello, my name is Gordon Fisher. I am an instructor at the Doshikai Dojo in Acton. And this program is about Kenjutsu. And we'll, tonight we'll be using a boken, well, a wooden sword, and uh, for safety reasons that uh, you saw in the, in the opening uh, sequence of slicing things up. You can see why we want to use boken. These actually are, are dangerous weapons of themselves. So, but uh, we, we try and keep a, a safe distance. But we'll be uh, concentrating on a kata called the Tsutsu no Tachi. And it is the foundation of the style of Katori Shintoru. And uh, we'll subsequently move on and teach you that kata tonight. The first stance we're going to learn is Segan. You're pointing the sword at your opponent's eyes and the sword becomes invisible. It's just nothing but a point of steel pointing at his eyes. Okay. There's a side view of Segan. Okay. There's Gaidan. Adai Joda. Notice the, the sword is beside my head. We'll show you later why. If you're wearing a helmet, you wouldn't be able to raise the sword over your head. Toriuke. Okay. This is Inokanmai. The blade wants to be facing the opponent so that it is not seen. From the side, it beside the head, but slightly in front. Okay, first thing you want to learn is how to properly hold the sword. Okay. You want to bring your hand down from the top so that the palm is on top, and then wrap your little fingers around and hold on. All right. The thumb and forefinger do not want to hold the sword. If you hold the sword tight like this, it becomes a fixed item. Right? When if you loosen your thumb and forefinger, you have mobility of the wrist. Right? The left hand is placed in the same fashion. You have a space in between, so again, you have mobility of the wrist. The handle, or ska, as in Japanese, is basically a lever. And the blade extends out from it. Okay. Whatever the, what happens on the handle will happen to the, to the blade. So if you turn the wrist, you turn the blade. So you want to keep the blade between yourself and the enemy. Okay. And you can see as if you were holding a piece of meat, you would want to push down and slice the meat. It's just like you were in the kitchen, only you're dealing with uh, something that's moving. Okay. Yeah. Maki okay. Basically, this is an evasion. I'm going to keep my sword pointed at the enemy and then as he comes in, I'm going to remove the target and bring the sword back. The ska goes directly up over my forehead. The sword goes off on the left side. This is another reason that uh, if you were wearing a, a helmet, okay, it would need to go off to the side. But as I pull forward with my left hand, the right hand will follow it and slice down through my opponent. That's all. In that fashion. Right. Now the techniques of Kenjutsu try to go for the chinks in the armor of the day. Okay. Uh, you can see the, uh, the helmet basically 
contoured so that if you was hit, it would deflect off to the side. Okay, the dole or chest plate would protect the, the the sides and the front of the chest. Okay, and the forearm guards would protect the hands and the forearms from from cuts. So what you would try to do is get inside those areas. So the techniques of the kata go for the neck, okay? They go for, if he raised his arm, okay? Just raise it up over your head, okay? Go for in here, under between this area here, the armpit area, for the hip below the, the dole, okay? And as you can see, there's lacing up underneath the hand. So as he is holding his sword in his hands, I would be cutting up underneath here in order to take advantage. And if I take off his arm or slice the tendons in the arm, he is not a threat to me anymore and I can move on to the next opponent. So that's basically what we're, we're looking for. We're looking for areas in the body that we can get inside. If he was wearing leg uh, protection here, I would be slicing inside the thigh and cutting arteries in order to make him bleed out and just bleed out on the battlefield. And I wouldn't have to worry about him at all. Okay. But those are the major areas that we're looking to cut at, and you'll notice them as we go through the kata. Okay. Now we're going to do the kata with the, starting with the opening etiquette, okay? And we come forward, left foot, right foot, lower yourself down to the left knee, draw the sword, cross swords, place the point of the sword on the floor, Place them down, cutting edge to cutting edge. Then rising, moving away, left, down. Three. And back up. Coming forward, left, right, down. In the left hand, right hand, Sagan. Rise up and begin the kata. Ashme. Disengage. Two makiuchi. Come forward and thrust. Come forward and cut. Step in, cut the head, lock, step in, cut the hip. You disengage and cut up underneath the forearm. And take his hands off. Step in, cut him, side step, cut down, deflect. Then step in, cut the head, attack the leg. Thrust to the throat. Disengage. Step in, slice the neck. Cut up under the forearm and come in and cut the chest. And back to Sega. Yame. Okay. Okay, now we're going to do the kate again and I'm going to try to make any corrections I need to do. From Segan, you want to, Wichidachi, you want to push Shidachi backwards. One, two. Okay. Now here you have too much, too oh, much of an overlap. Okay. You want about three inches of an overlap of the swords. Okay. And then, Lewis, you want to disengage. Step back with the right foot. And then two Makiuchi. 
and come forward and thrust. Lewis, you step back. Okay. Now, stepping in and cutting, you deflect. Okay. Now, step in and cut. Step in and cut the hip. Okay. Now, stepping back as he cuts up underneath your forearm. Okay. And then cut his hands. Now step in and cut him, side steps, and you block. Okay. Turn, cut his head. Okay, okay now this is one right there. Okay. There's no reason to bring the sword up if he's if he hasn't cut yet. Okay? So from here, he's back this way with the sword like this. Okay? And he's not going to come in and cut at you if your sword is up, okay? So what you have to do is wait till he commits to the cut before you block, okay? That's basically, you're drawing him in. It's like, like you're uh, a spider waiting for the fly to land on the web, okay? So as he comes in to cut, then you block. Then you go for his leg, and he steps back and blocks that thrust to the throat. He deflects that off to the side, okay? Then you disengage, all right? He's gonna come in and slice your neck, sidestep, cut up underneath, knock his sword out of the way, clear a path and slice the chest. Very good. Okay, now the common mistake that people make is stepping back without bringing the left foot forward and the, the uh, uchidachi misses the sword. You basically have to bring the body up so that this, when the sword rises, it rises to the place where the head was. And then when he comes for the hip, a lot of, the, a lot of times people will come down and try and block the leg instead of the hip and they end up getting hit in the hands. In fact, it, it happens frequently. Okay, and then this movement here, lifting the sword. This is done by pivoting the sword through the, with the hands. You don't have to make a big arm movement. It's only the hands that move and come in with the cut. And then coming back here, people have a tendency to bring the sword off to the side. You want to keep the sword in line with the enemy and then step back out of the way of the cut and remove the target. And then just go back naturally into a kneeling position. And wait for the cut to come at you before you lift your hands to block. Push your sword out of the way and slice. Come in naturally straight towards the throat. And then it's this reason when he deflects the sword and you have the blade facing you right between the eyes that you want to disengage and get out of the way. And you wait for the cut to come here and you wait till he commits himself before you remove the target. Turn the hips, drop the sword, slice up underneath the arm. Knock his blade out of the way, looking underneath the sword, not over your arm, but underneath the arm, so that when you come in, you get a large slice. And it's always the left hand that cuts. The right hand just guides the sword. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna have Dana follow me on this uh, set that we're going to do on uh, Shidachi. I'm going to tuck my hakama up so that you can see what my feet are doing. Okay. From Segan, pointing at the eyes, you want to move back two steps. And uh, two, makiuchi, draw back, come forward. 
back and forward. Then draw the left foot up and thrust forward towards your opponent. Then a walking Makiuchi, sword coming back as the foot goes forward and cut. Then shuffle back. Bring the left foot up, step stop off center and bring the sword up where your head was. And then step back, block a sword cut to the hip. Lift the blade, step forward and cut up underneath, Ogasumi style. And then release the sword with the left hand, come back to Gedan. Sidestep a cut, bring the sword behind you and go down on one, your left knee and cut all the way down the side of your opponent. Block an overhead cut, Toriyuke, and then bring the sword behind you, rise and slice through his leg. Come forward and slice his throat, disengage. This we should be facing back in the original position. Then as he comes for your neck, you sidestep, bring the sword down behind you and up, slice up underneath his forearm, and then knock his blade away and come in and slice his chest. And then back to Siga. Okay, this is the Uchidachi side. We're going to push the student back. One, two, and then disengage. The blade wants to be facing the student. Then as he comes at you, you retreat. One, two, he cuts at your head. You deflect the sword. Then stepping in, cut to the head. Draw the left foot up, bring the sword back, cut to his hip. He tries to cut up underneath your right forearm. You step back and go to Dai Jodan. And then cut his hands. Step in, Makiuchi. He sidesteps you. Step back and block. Turn your hips, cut to the head. Step back, block a cut to the leg. Step back, block a slice to the throat. Disengage. Then stepping in, cutting the left side of his neck. Horizontal cut. He sidesteps and cuts up underneath your forearm and then comes in to cut your chest. Okay, now we're just gonna concentrate on the footwork. And I'm going to try and walk you through it here, literally. We're going to retreat, one, two, and then two, Makiuchi. Notice the foot stays in front of the other one so that you can lunge forward. Draw her up and lunge. Step forward and cut. Push away. Then draw up, step off, and block, block, lift, step in, cut up, get up. Side step a cut, and slice down the side. Toriyuke, stand, cut the leg, step in, thrust to the throat, disengage. Side step, cut up underneath the arm, knock the sword away, come in with the cut. It's all of the hips and feet. And back to Seigan. And Uchidachi side. 
pushing your opponent backwards. One, two, disengage. As he comes at you, you retreat. One, two, and deflect. Stepping in, cut to the head, sliding up, cutting to the hip, stepping back, removing the target, cutting his hands. Stepping in, Makiuchi, side step, turn the hips and block, stepping in, cut the head, stepping back, protecting the leg, stepping back, deflecting the sword to the throat, disengage, stepping in, one, two, horizontal cut, remove the arm, push away. Always keep your knees bent, and you want the weight in the center, never forward or back, always in the center. Okay, now we're gonna go through the applications of the techniques that we've been, we've been showing you. Now uh, you've seen this movement many times, this coming back and coming forward. Okay, in, in an actual fight, if your opponent was to come in and attack you, all right, you just come back and as the sword goes by, come over the top of his cut, okay? Or if he comes in and makes his cut, okay, you would deflect it and come in and make that cut. So your makiuchi would be deflecting the sword off and you would be coming back and making this cut, okay? <clears throat> if uh, he were to, you to, to, to block that or move out of the way, okay? So again, you come in and attack, okay? And you move away. You immediately come forward and thrust into your opponent. In any type of uh, confrontation, you can't rely on just one technique. You have to have backup techniques and you want them to flow naturally into one another. Again, he comes in with the, with the cut, okay? I deflect, cut, this way he moves away. I go to thrust at him, he moves away. I come back in and cut. Okay. And this happens in the first sequence of the kata. You have the makiuchi, you have the thrust, you have the walking makiuchi. So you basically you have backup techniques. Okay. In the, in the kata with uh, shidachi over here, okay, and he comes in to cut at me and I deflect the sword, okay, he's walking in, I deflect the sword, okay. In all actuality, when he came in with that, move back just a little bit there, okay, when he, when he comes in with the cut, what I'm doing is sidestepping and slicing the side of his head, okay. Rather than deflecting the sword, sidestepping, cutting the head, okay, or the neck just underneath the jawline, the throat, depending on the armor that he has, okay? Uh, okay, this is basically trying to explain all of the movements as they, they are found sequ sequentially in, in the kata, okay? So I'm here and he's going to step in and cut at my head. In the kata, it's like this, okay? And then he comes in with a cut to the hip. In reality, okay, you wanna have the, uh, the other foot forward, okay? In reality, as he comes in with a cut, 
I use the momentum of his cut to bring the sword around and slice his head off. Okay. That way there, I've used both of the motions. All right. And it's basically what they... Okay. All right. So, again, all right, comes in, cut, all right, cut. Now, from here, what I want to do is cut up underneath this forearm. All right, so, I'm lifting the sword up and stepping in and slicing up underneath the right forearm before he can raise the sword over his head. Okay. If he were to make the cut here for my hands, right, I just come forward and stab. Okay. And again, from here, if he steps in and makes his cut, I sidestep and stab up into his body. Okay. These are basically uh, movements that you could do without moving off and uh, making uh, large movements, it's just things that would happen naturally, okay? So from uh, this motion down here where I'm waiting here, okay, if he comes in and cuts at my head, I'm going to move in and slice up his body rather than wait for this, okay? I'm going to cut the body or I can wait for his arms to come down and cut the forearms. But it's a lot easier to slice up through the body this way or come in. And again, as, as he comes in, okay, I could come in and sh jab the scar into his armpit here, and then take out the leg. Okay. Or I could wait, all right, wait for the cut, come in this way here, and then raise up, and strike with the scar, and then cut the neck. So you have many options. You don't have to stick to the, uh, the kata is basically an idealized situation, but everybody's movements are gonna be different. And you're going to basically take advantage of anything, any opening that might happen within the form, okay? <clears throat> so, as you're, as you're doing, coming in, and he comes to thrust at you, okay? Use the curvature of your sword to deflect his away and take him out. Okay, and this basically works very well for this, this block, this lower block here, okay. You want to come forward and thrust to the throat. Right? And at any time, uh, if you touch a razor blade straight down, okay, it's not going to cut your hand. But if you move your finger or move the blade any fraction of an inch, you're going to slice it. Okay? The Japanese sword is a three foot straight razor. So that is why we're using wooden swords here. Okay. So this way here, it deflects my sword off to the side. Or I deflect his sword off to the side. And disengage. 
comes in to cut my neck, remove the target, cut up underneath the arm, knock the sword out of the way, but okay. that, that is you found in uh, a lot of kata. You find it, uh, it's, it's basically the, um, the primary technique of Katoi Shinduru. And uh, that basically is, summarizes up uh, the applications of the kata. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Gordon, I have some questions for you from the guys in the dojo. Okay. Uh, first question, why does the samurai sword have only one edge? Okay, well, basically it's, it's what gives it the curvature. When, when it's quenched, you heat it up and you quench it in water, it basically has a, a thin edge and a, a wide edge and it basically just wants to curl up this way here and it gives it this just beautiful curvature that's why mm. and it also it gives you a, a slicing it, it wouldn't slice if it was the opposite way and it gives it strength if you had two edges then you would be be much weaker. Yeah. This way here you can use it as a shield, you can use it to reinforce your s stabbing power. Okay. It's, it's also a great safety for returning the sword to the scabbard. It would be very difficult to put a razor back into a scabbard when you draw the sword, it's sliding on the back. You have a wooden scabbard. If you had the edge against the scabbard, it would slice right through the, and take your digits off at the same time. It's a good reason why you only have one blade. That's a very good reason, yeah. <laughs> Next question. Um, what is the purpose of ki? Ti, ti is basically means uh, a spirit yell, and it comes from the shoes. Actually, you're not using the, your voice box; you're exploding from down here. Your lungs are basically down the largest down here, so you basically you tighten the diaphragm, and it expels the air out and it forces the power of the body. So you're throwing your spirit at your opponent. Ki means spirit meeting, okay? So it's the difference between a city horn and an air horn, okay? If your car horn beeps, you're basically calling attention to somebody, okay? But if you have a truck horn sounding or a, uh, a steamship whistle, okay? It's just going to startle you, okay? The same with kia. So instead of ah, it's ah, that kind of feeling, okay? Just an explosion. Okay, next question. Um, in the kata that you uh, demonstrated, Hi. Uh, you go down on one knee. Hmm. This seems to be a poor position to be in when you're fighting. Mm. Uh, so why do you uh, go down to that position? Well, 
normally you would be fighting out of doors, okay? The dojo is basically for developing uh, a, uh, your spirit and for, for learning purposes. But in all actuality, you would be out, out of doors, okay? And if you're fighting somebody, you're not gonna be able to see the groundwork that is around you. And chances are you might trip over a root or a rock or something and lose your balance, okay? So it's very, very possible that you would end up down on one knee. And uh, in any type of fighting, especially uh, groundwork in, in uh, the uh, empty hand martial arts, you're gonna end up on the ground, okay? So you just, you have to have that included so that if it, the happenstance comes up, you can deal with it. Mm. Mm. Um, why is the hakama um, baggy and instead of being tight against the legs? Well, basically the, the hakama is uh, an outgrowth of the, the court, okay, the, and the um, aristocracy of Japan. The samurai are descendants of the aristocracy. They were hired by them and uh, they, they look up to them. So their, their costume was uh, influenced by them. Uh, another reason is that uh, the the flowing mood, it makes it much cooler, okay? There, there are many um, climates in Japan, okay? Uh, and uh, another reason that the samurai would do it, would had the flowing motion is to, to hide the movements of the legs. Earlier, when, when I was showing the movements, I would talk the hakama up so that you could actually see what my legs were doing, okay? This way here, if you're, you have your hips down like that, you're, you can't really see what the legs are going to be doing. And you can flow and, and move out of the way naturally. Mm. Yeah. Um, earlier, when I was uh, helping demonstrate the kata, mm. you uh, corrected my distance. I mm. was too close. Mm. I was wondering, what are the dangers of uh, incorrect distance. Okay, well the dangers are, th this part of the sword, the first uh, third of the sword, is for cutting, right? The middle third between here is for controlling your opponent's blade, okay? And this, the last third here is used for blocking. When you, your opponent comes in and cuts you, you want to be able to block his attack. If you try to block down here, it's too far away from the wrist and you would end up being hit by your own sword, okay? So if you're holding it and blocking here, you have a better chance of, of blocking. So this is blocking, controlling, killing, okay? That's it. Mm, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Now to make it more relevant to you and so that you can understand things, George Lucas was a student of Akura Kurosawa and the man who choreographed his fight was uh, a student of Katori Shintoru. And 